was running. Uh, if you're wondering, 511 vest, not plate carrier. Uh, tactical or invert smells wearing a plate carrier. We've shown that already. I'll do a review on, view on this. This attack force horizontal holster carrying a CZ75 P01 Phantom undergoing test. What is up, TM Piers? Nut and fancy load bearing equipment review. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about this vest right here, the 511 VTAC LBE vest. I love it. I wouldn't be doing a video on it if I didn't. I've used it a lot now in the Nut and Fancy project. That doesn't mean I'm going to review probably a lot of a lot of vests and LBE stuff. It's just there's too many systems out there, uh, and there's a lot of good systems. And the ones I roll in front of the camera, the ones I promote and talk about, are not the only good options. I hope you don't think that, but they are definitely viable options for you. And generally, I'm going to cover stuff that I feel is cost effective. There's some tactical nylon out there, which I think is a complete ripoff. And I will get to that uh, in the talking points oh, on the Tactical LB review by Nothing Fancy. We'll talk about that in value, um, but I've already reviewed one 511 loadout system. You guys remember that? Well, I may annotate if I think about it. It was this thing right here. The five, I've got so much gear here, dudes, as I roll it in front of the camera. Forgive me if I'm like bumping the tripod and stuff. This, this is a logistically intense review. The plate carrier, this is a new one. Bought on clearance, thank you very much, for $18? Yeah, that was from an awesome TMP -er who gave us all a heads up on the clearance. Uh, I think they're still there at the 511 homepage. Not sure what colorations they have. Of course, this is Desert Earth, Olive Drab in the background. That's the vest, this is the plate carrier, but the colorations are the same. Uh, Desert Earth, OD, and black. Um, but $18 or whatever it was is around there. Amazing value. Previously reviewed, love it, high speed, lightweight, very trim, easy to put on. You've seen me wearing it a lot in the Nut and Fancy uh, project, haven't you? The plate carrier, tons. That's because I just dig it. It's so high speed. Here's one configured, wearing an M&P9 pistol. One of my favorite reviewing setups, actually. There it is. So that one's wearing a Serpa for an M&P9, two shotgun slash precision long range rifle pouches. Then I've got two pistol pouches, and these are set up for 20 round uh, 223 carbine. Why 20? Because this side is kind of meant for long range if I'm doing it. In other words, I'm shooting a 308, maybe some other uh, bolt gun or something. I'd pack it here. They have inserts. I'm not going to go into that. Or if I'm shooting an SPR, that is a long range 223 rifle, I'll be using 20 round mags generally, not 30s because it just helps with my bi bipod use. Getting sidetracked again. On the back side though, and this is why I love the plate carrier, as previously mentioned, uh, set up for tactical carving. 30 round mags, pistol. This one's a 226 rail Serpa, and I just flip it back and forth. And sometimes guys will show up in the project and go, dude, why are you wearing a pistol holster on your back? Because dudes, I'm reviewing. I'm constantly check, uh, you know, checking out different guns. These are my primaries that I have on here, and with the QD system of Serpa, I can easily swap out a different pistol and run it and I love the Serpa system. Um, incidentally in the background Mini 14 baby nothing fancy special love it love it you saw it in Armed Serenity 2009 you know as I introduce it to the fellers out there love it this is kind of an interesting coloration again here's a sidetrack sorry just I just get sidetracked as we talk guns gear and stuff that's Leopold Dark Earth or Dark Brown right there Kind of a cool color, uh, contrasting nicely against that underbrush coloration. Duracoat rocks. Big project doing that gun. You'll see more of it as I do my update on the Mini 14. Stand by. Don't bug me. It's coming. Lots on the plate here at Nothing Fancy Project. You guys know that. Back to the vest review, though. Um, real quick, I'm going to attempt, like, if I haven't already said, I'll say it now, to go down my talking points on an LBE review. Probably forgetting stuff, annotating it later, maybe not never annotating it. We'll see. I want to start out talking versatility. How do I envision this? 511 VTAC LBE vest. Um, as I understand, having been designed by Kyle Lamb, I think he's a pretty squared away dude from what I know about him. 
um, cause I like the stuff he designs. Uh, so he and I probably see eye to eye on a lot of different things in a tactical arena. So great job on it. But I envision it to be used however you want. Right now I'm set up for tactical carbine for the Mini 14. Could very easily be an AR-15. They share the same form factors in the magazines. 30 rounders here, of course. Set up with an FMP pistol, carrying a light and attack force horizontal holster. One of my favorite horizontal holsters so far because it's affordable. This is like a $14 holster, dudes. Hard to find if you can find it. Don't ask me where because they're hard to find. You're just going to have to go to TAC Force's website. I'm working a discount, by the way, guys, directly from TAC Force for you guys. FMP9 wearing the TLR3 again. Weapon light, previously reviewed in the Night Fancy Project, of course. Uh, okay. Let's see if I can clip that in. Hang on. I'm reaching through the tripod. A couple uh, pistol mag pouches up there as well. So that's the way that is set up. For carbine, you could set up for shotgun, just like I showed you on the plate carrier. It could be set up for medical usage. If you're an EMT, paramedic, you would just configure it as per your pouch requirement. And that is made possible, of course, because it uses standard Molly webbing, which is spaced properly. Okay, some other vests uh, are not. The lower quality ones, what, I, I don't want to throw out names because there's just, again, so many different vests. I can't keep up with them all, but I have seen vests where the spacing is an issue because in looks, it looks cool, and that's what they're going for. They're trying to attract you as a buyer, but the quality and the, you know, the adherence to Molly spec is pretty much off. You need to check that before you buy it. I would stick with the major name brands that are proven, and I've talked to about talked to you guys about them a lot. Um, so you could configure it however you want. Uh, real estate, and that's under the talking point as well for versatility, means how much room do you have to configure your pouches? You will have more than a plate carrier, okay? And that was the downside of the 511 plate carrier, if there is one, is you do not have a lot of real estate. You can see the width here. You're going to run out of pouches. Uh, it, depending on what your requirements are, what your mission is. And that's why I love a Molly vest is because you can configure it as needed. But you can see right here, I ran out of room after three mags. For some dudes and some missions, that's not enough. Okay, the tactical vest by 511 is going to give you more. See, I'm running four 30 round patches across here and I have room for two pistol mag patches without stretching around to the side. Okay, this was wearing a TK11 Phoenix. Uh, ooh, what do we have in here? Oh yeah, Benchmade. McHenry Williams, Duracoated of course. Love that, you've seen it a lot. But I love the real estate option on the 511 vest. It's adequate. You know, do I need more? Well, if I do, I'll switch to a different system. Uh, and if you do switch to this, this different system, realize that there's some downsides. Anytime you stretch gear around the side here, you probably have to have a stiff side panel either with a polyurethane or plastic insert to stiffen and hold that load on the side or in a, an armor panel, soft armor probably, which allows that weight to be carried without the nylon buckling. Okay, again, a little uh, detour as we talk about it. Also notice how the molly goes all the way up to the shoulder area, which allows me to mount those pistol pouches kind of on the high side dig it. I try to keep my right shoulder, I'm right-handed, remember that, I try to keep my right shoulder clear. And that comes by way of experience with me mounting stuff on my right shoulder and having it get in the way with my cheek weld or my the stock weld of my carbine of choice for that day or shotgun, whatever it is. I keep that clear. But I like the option, especially if you're left-handed, you can do the same thing. You just switch it over, of course. So no issues with real estate. Um, I generally don't mount a lot of stuff on the back. That's because if I'm in a vehicle, the last thing I, oh, I shouldn't say the last thing, but I don't like being pushed out from the seat or stuff like that. And plus, it's hard to access back here. The downside is, and this is kind of a philosophical uh, data point for me, nothing fancy, is the good side is it helps balance the vest out. If I hang a lot of weight on the front, and keep in mind, every time you load up, an AR-15 aluminum magazine, it's going to be more if it's steel, one pound. So there's one, two, three, four pounds, plus your weapon, plus lights, knives, pistol ammo, and it's all on the front of the vest. And what will happen, and I've seen it even with this vest, is that it will tilt, okay? 
and it will uh, kind of ride in the front. So if you mounted a pouch in the back, that would be good, load it up, although it's not gonna be quickly accessed, at least you have it. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of jump ahead into armor and H2O integration here because it dovetails into what we're talking. See that point right there? This is actually running a soft armor plate from Diamondback Tactical made for their own tactical vest. And it's called FA, FAPC, Fast Attack Plate Carrier, I think. And this is their class three armor insert. It'll defeat any pistol round, not rifle armor. Did you hear me? Not rifle armor, pistol armor. Okay, but the nice thing by running it back here in the 511 vest is it helps balance that load out a little bit, gives the back a little more stiffness and also gives you a back pistol armor capability. Could I run a rifle plate back here? Um, you might be able to, but the pouch is not really sized. Let me open this up so you can see what I'm talking about. The pouch is not really sized for integration of rifle plates. It's meant for H2O, like a Camelback, and I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so it's kind of a big pouch. What would happen is your rifle plate is going to flop to the bottom. Remember, those suckers are about eight pounds with current technology. So one in the front, uh, on, on a different vest, one in the back, you're talking 16, just like I talked about in my um, armor video last year. But anyways, you could integrate this plate here, which I do, helps balance it out, all those other advantages. Additionally, you can see properly, it has an attachment point for the Camelback. A lot of vests don't have this, okay? Because that Camelback, when it's full, is going to be heavy. Here comes another 511 TAC vest. This is in their, you know, Desert Earth coloration. This is my son's tactical doodles and on this vest, we opted to carry the water a different way. This is a on clearance black water um, hydration pouch. Molly capable, bought from BotacTactical.com for like something insanely ridiculously cheap. Since Blackwater stopped making all their gear, got it for a great deal. So he's carrying it on the outside. And the benefit of that is on the inside, again, you can use that pouch for armor, right? As opposed to water, your option. Now notice on Tactical Doodles 511 VTAC LBE vest, um, he's running open top 511 mag pouches along with 1911 pistol pouches. This is his system, his setup. He runs it the way he wants to. So again, you have the versatility you need and you can configure it pretty much any way you want. On to sizing and adjustability. This, if you didn't already see it, is a regular size and I am 6'3", 200 pounds and it fits me just fine. No problems. Uh, it comes up to 2XL and if you're a big fella, you might look into that. Um, the adjustability, I think, is excellent on it. Fast Tech's, not really Fast Tech's brand, but Fast Tech's style of side buckles, I find they adjust pretty quickly. If that is not enough adjustment, you can undo this, and you can see the Velcro uh, options there too. Three strips of Velcro allows you to tighten it, loosen it as needed. Don't forget, you're gonna have to do this in different temperatures as well. As you layer up, layer down, chances are you're gonna have to resize your tactical loadout system. There's very few systems I find that you can get, uh, you don't will, will not have to do that if I can speak. Here's some shoulder adjustment in here, both with Velcro and the top straps. That will take some experimentation. And while we're on the inside of the vest, kind of doing the features review, there's your interior drag handle. And I think some dudes really like this because it's not on the exterior, not showing, which some guys really like, but it's still readily available for dragging your buddy to cover whatever. What do I use it for? Carrying the vest most often and when it's fully loaded dudes it's heavy especially if you're wearing water body armor and all the other crap i was talking about too here's your interior pockets nice to have um, i would like to have zippers perhaps rather than velcro but at least you have them and when you use velcro you're going to save weight right in here level one nothing fancy first aid kit okay and it's up to you what you would carry in your interior pockets uh, be careful because you're going to be looking like a chipmunk i think i've said that before as you have a lot of stuff. You want your vest to be slim and trim and as low profile as possible so it doesn't catch on stuff, especially if you're in and out of a vehicle constantly. You know, uh, And I will say again, this is a pretty high speed trim system. In this pocket, what do I got in here? Old Dell Axum PDA running the Night Force Ballistics program, dudes. 
Uh, yeah, so that would just be an example. I need to dirt cut that case, by the way. I'll get to that. Um, some Kleenex in there. Really helpful when you're shooting when it's like 10 degrees outside. Nice pockets, though, and they're good to have. I don't use them a ton, but it's nice to know they're there if you need them. Down the talking points, comfort. I'll give it an A for the 511 vest, and here's why. Lots and lots of mesh, okay? Where'd that other one, doodle vest go? There it is, I can show you this one because it's not loaded down as much. Okay, I love the mesh that 511 uses. It's a very stiff and yet breathable mesh. Again, we're kind of jumping ahead to quality and there's a lot of variations in the quality of materials that do our companies will use for tactical equipment. There's different quality levels of mesh, believe it or not. Don't go with a flimsy mesh. And if you don't get this one, use the information I'm providing you to arm yourself to buy something similar. A very stiff mesh like this will hold the molly straps more securely and in turn will hold your loadout more securely with less flexing. And yet it gives nothing up in ventilation. I love mesh. Even in winter I love mesh because I can always layer underneath, right? Uh, in summertime operations, that is a huge, huge benefit that you get that airflow. It is probably the most critical factor, in my opinion, um, to the comfort level, level of an LBE system, a tactical vest, if you will. Be careful too, getting back to the pockets. If I load a bunch of crap in the pockets like I have here, that first aid kit, I create a moisture barrier. You're gonna have a lot of sweat built up here if you're operating again in really hot climates. Been there, done it, seen it. You know, just take it for what it's worth, uh, something to consider. This will be a good time to talk about alternatives to this vest. Retail on the 511 VTAC LBE vest, around $80. You can find it. I did a little surfing around on the internet. I'm not going to say where I found uh, the things because they're so temporary. And, you know, a month from now, the places I mentioned could be gone. So you do your own Googling for this vest and find it the best price possible. But maybe around 70 is what I found it for. So some guys will say that's a little bit on the high side. Eh, kind of. Um, there's definitely more expensive ones. But there's a couple more affordable ones. And I'm just going to roll this in. I may do a separate review, but I haven't really tested it at length yet. Here it comes. This is the KZ brand. That's Botac Propriety proprietary, or a lot of people say Botash, I just call it Botac, uh, proprietary vest, KZ, Kilo Zulu brand. Here's the printout of it right here, Tactical Elite Vest. Look at the price, $40? That's pretty good, huh? And why am I rolling this in front of the camera? Because the quality level on this vest, the KZ brand, as far as I can identify to this point, pretty high, pretty high. Um, on par, almost with a 511, not quite. Let's look at the mesh. Remember I was talking about different mesh? Here is a much uh, flimsier mesh on the KZ brand. It's still adequate, still pretty good, but it's very kind of athletic mesh. See how it's just very supple and it's not stiff? You don't want that, not in a vest. Uh, that's kind of a downside. Uh, and then it has a lot of molly straps on it. Can you guys identify just by looking at that what a downside perhaps might be? Ferris, no? Well, you'd quickly identify it if you wore this vest in very hot conditions. There's no ventilation under the straps. Why? Because they put solid webbing all the way across. Instead of alternating airflow like 511 does, like that, see that? They're not doing pure webbing. It's alternated, so you get airflow. You get moisture exchange coming out of your vest. You probably, probably will have some issues on the KZ brand in very hot environments. I still think it's a good vest. We're still testing it. I may do a separate review on it. Um, it is an, al uh, an alternative to the 511 vest, about half the price too, and I'd probably recommend it at this point, but I bring it up because of comfort, and I wanna t teach you guys about how to evaluate the moisture exchange on a LBE system. A lot of dudes, and I just crack up about dudes. I mean, I see them wearing all the time um, the very, very heavy duty tactical loadout systems that have multiple layers of Cordura, they got body armor. It's like they put layer upon layer upon layer of you know, fabric, body armor. I just don't see how they breathe. You know, how, I mean, how do you breathe and get moisture coming out your sweat to evaporate? I don't see it happening. Um, now, I have a vest like that. You see me wear it. Arm Serenity, I was wearing it, but it's winter time. Okay, it was, you know, 28 degrees out. Yeah, in that environment, I'm willing to wear 
more of a traditional loadout system. The comfort level on all the 511 stuff, thumbs up. Because the mesh is squared away, the webbing squared away, and you get breathability with it. On to weight, very decent. I did not weigh the vest, and I'm not going to take all my pouches off to do it. Um, but I will tell you, the good indication of weight is, again, the plate carrier. It weighs next to nothing. You know, it's there's no metal on it, for one thing. Um, I hate it when they put, like, shoulder D-rings that made of metal um, on the shoulder for attaching, uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, I just don't like it. You know, it's not necessary. You're going to sacrifice your mobility for no reason at all. Apparently, Kyle Lamb gets it because th both of these loadout systems are featherweight for what they are. There's no extraneous hardware or other crap on it you don't need, in my opinion, and it is about as light as it can be. Big thumbs up for the weight. It's also the colorations. Uh, I dig the OD, as you can tell. That's a good coloration. It's flexible in a lot of different environments. Looks cool. Second type of cool. Contrasting against the, I don't know, the Coyote Brown pouches of the Blackwater ones, or what it, whichever ones you want. You might use the 511 brand, like on this vest right here. Okay, depends. And that, again, is your desert earth coloration for the 511 vest. It comes in black as well. So good good job with that. Um, it'd be cool to have it in multicam, but I have yet to see a effective camouflage pattern in webbing like this, or the mesh, I should say, in multicam. So they're generally going with solid colorations. And you know, honestly, that's fine by me. No problem. We kind of already talked about armor and water integration. Thoroughly, actually, right? Any questions on that? Oh, forgot to mention, obviously, in a vest with a zip front, you're not going to be able to put on a front armor pouch. Um, not, or plate, I mean, not a pouch. Dig? So that's a disadvantage. That's why some guys will prefer the plate carrier. Putting up with a lack of real estate, but I can put a plate here, I can put a plate on the back. I'm fully protected. Choose yourself what you want. You know, do you, do you want uh, hard armor, soft armor? I would think real long and hard before I go with hard, hard, excuse me, hard armor. Why? Because you need to run a gun with it. You need to hike mile after mile with all your crap on. Ammo, blades, first aid, food, water, knee pads, snacks and then tell me how you like those hard armor plates, okay? Most guys over there in Afghanistan and Iraq pitch them whenever possible. A lot of the commands will not let them do it though. They have to wear it. But for you civilian sheepdogs, WROL, um, I probably wouldn't even waste my time and money buying hard armor. I really wouldn't. Your mobility is just gonna suck. How in shape are you, you know? You know, if you're massively in shape, maybe. It's a big maybe even then. Downside on the 511 vest, belt integration, eh. You know, some guys will complain that it does not have the drop-down, built-in drop-down loops to attach a web belt onto. Um, the way I look at a vest, it well, you see me. I mean, you see me in dozens and dozens of hours worth of nothing fancy video. Do you ever see me wearing a, a belt on my vest? Generally not. That's just the way I do it. Because to me, a vest is a self-contained system. As long as I can do this put my pistol on the vest. And you see, I strive to do that. Why? Because then it's a grab and go system. You grab it, throw it on, zip, it's already adjusted for the climate, for you, and you're ready to rock and roll. You don't have to grab anything else. You don't have to waste time doing leg straps up, looking for a belt, you know, oh wait, you know, that leg strap's not adjusted. No, one zipper, you're done. Simplicity rocks, especially when you're in a hurry, especially when you're under stress. And some guys will say, well, does this, and this is kind of the new Vogue thing. Does your tactical vest, does your LBE system have a quick ditch capability? Can I get it off in a hurry? And if it doesn't, I'm not interested. Well, again, I think that's an overplayed thing. For me, especially for civilian sheepdogs, um, in other words, can I ditch my vest immediately? The thinking again is like if you go into water. Okay, that to me is probably the reason why you would have to ditch your vest immediately with all this weight. And that's a valid point. With a 511, hello, unzip it. Unzip it. There's your QD right there. Uh, you know, just ditch out of it. You know, lots of other vests have different complex and high speed systems where you pull one thing and the whole thing detaches. I don't know. I don't think I need that. I really don't. You know, well, you're wounded. Nothing fancy. You need to get to the wound quick. Well, okay, you won't be doing it because if you're so wounded, you can't take off your vest. Someone else will. 
then they can unzip your vest, right? Only if it had a really complex attachment system would I be interested. These don't. Both of these vests, including the KZ brand, zip. Done. I think the KZ actually has a quick thing coming off the shoulder too. Let me talk about that later. So belt integration, yeah, kind of a downside. I could easily build some 550 cord, even some webbing of my own design to integrate a web belt if I wanted, if I needed more real estate, if I wanted to run my pistol hel holster on it and integrate it into the vest. So it is a grab and go system. The belt is attached to the vest. I understand that. Right now I have some hollowed out 550 cord running. Why? For attachment of like, you know, masking tape. I could just tie that, you know, like so. And then as we're doing our running guns, I have my masking tape dangling, ready to go. You access that all the time. Um, easy enough to do. I don't look at that as a big disadvantage. They probably could have made these little belt loops of plastic ones bigger. So we could put in belt keepers, especially if you have a snapped belt keeper. That would be a really good improvement, I think, probably to the 511 vest. Not a deal breaker, though. Not a deal breaker. Quality. Excellent. 511 stuff is high value. It's reasonably priced in my book, and it lasts. Um, you know, for the last year, I've been using lots of, not lots, but a select number of 511 tactical items, and they just don't wear out. They just keep going. YKK heavy duty zippers. Okay, not a no name brand, and I've talked about it on some other vests, you know, and things where you could have issues if you go with a cheap zipper. And don't underestimate something simple like a zipper. It can really make or break you. If the zipper fails, you have Fastex buckle backups. Okay, good job. Talked about the mesh, awesome. The webbing material, you know, top grade nylon. The stitching throughout the vest. You know, it's double or triple stitched in stress points. High quality Velcro. These are all the things, the hallmarks of a quality vest, which you probably won't see in the cut rate vest. They look the same, don't they? They're not, they're not. And you'll learn by using that, as a lot of my friends have, that you know they try to cut corners, like, I'm just gonna buy this vest, Condor vest. You know, some paintballers, airsofters, those, those guys will dig it, but for true tactical use, when it absolutely positively has to work, eh, I ain't doing it. Um, so all I don't really see any issues with a 511 gear quality-wise. I think it's outstanding. Great reports on this vest. Coming back from Afghanistan, Iraq, guys who have bought it with their own money, and in their MOS are allowed to use their own vest. Thumbs up, they love it, they love it. Wearing like iron, and we've seen that as well. I mean, Tactical Doodle's vest, lots of wear on it. Crawling in the dirt with it constantly. It's got some scrapes, bumps, and bruises. Overall though, going strong. 511 stuff, pretty, pretty awesome that way. Value is in always in the eye of the beholder, right dudes? Okay, is 80 bucks, and I'll just say you get it for retail. Is 80 bucks too much? I don't know, who are you? How do you define value? Like I always say, just depends. Buy smart, keep the item forever, and you'll probably forget about the price, okay? I'm not saying don't get it for the best price you can. You should, absolutely, get the best deal you can. In other words, go on the internet, search, and see if you can find the 511 VTAC LBE vest for, I don't know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Pull the trigger, buy it, integrate it, keep it forever. You'll love it. It's awesome. Track record, outstanding. Nothing bad to say, really. Um, it just works. No zipper failures, easy, comfortable, breathes well, takes hydration bladder slash back body armor, has the document pouches in there. Well designed, affordable. Good job, 511. Good job, Kyle Lamb. If you designed this, you did a great job. The 511 uh, vest. Uh, from Nothing Fancy gets a uh, full 10 out of 10. I really, there's not much, eh, maybe nine out of 10 subjects to change because of the, I wish those those things on the bottom were just a little bit bigger for guys that want to attach the belt. That's about it though, it rocks. Thanks for watching, thanks for the good ratings. It spurns me on to, on to do more. See ya. Hit.